it's time to look at e e e e ecosystems. Oh, sorry about that. Feels better though. An ecosystem is defined as a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. That's a bit of a mouthful though, so let's keep this simple. Biological means living creatures. Community means a group of something. Interacting means affecting each other. Organisms are living things. And physical environment means non-living natural stuff. So, if you simplify all this down, you could actually define it as a group of living creatures and the non-living things around them affecting each other. Ecosystems come in all sizes. Take a pond, for example. A pond is made of non-living things like the water and the rock and the mud underneath it. But there are also living things in there like fish, insects, frogs, and even bacteria. All of those things interact with each other in some way, so it fits the definition of an ecosystem perfectly. But let's think bigger. Now I want you to think about the whole of planet Earth. In some way, all the living and non-living things on the planet link together and affect each other in some way. So you could argue that the entire planet is just one big ecosystem because it still fits that definition. Perhaps most important of all are the global ecosystems. These are ecosystems that cover large areas of the planet's surface, both on land and in water. You might have also heard the word biome, which is just another word for global ecosystem. They mean exactly the same thing. Some of the best known land-based global ecosystems include tropical rainforests, hot deserts, tundra, tiger, no, not the animal, tiger, also known as boreal forest, and tropical grassland, also known as savanna. But there are many more that we will cover in this topic. So, it is about time we started to use the proper words to describe things that can make up an ecosystem. As we mentioned before, every ecosystem is made up of living and non-living things. There are actually some better words to use for these, and the good news is that many of these keywords make quite a lot of sense. Instead of saying things to describe the part of an ecosystem, we use the words components. A component literally means a part of something larger, which is why it's the perfect word for this. From there, we split the components in an ecosystem into two categories. Biotic components are the living things found in an ecosystem. The word comes from an ancient Greek word, bios, which means life. Makes a lot of sense. The other components must therefore be the non-living ones. We call these abiotic components. Putting a at the start of a word like that is the same as writing not. So it literally means not biotic components. Pretty easy, right? So there you go. Every ecosystem is made up of both biotic and abiotic components, all interacting with each other. There are a few other ecosystem keywords that you're going to need to know before we continue with this unit. So let's get right to them. Producers are plants that convert the sun's energy into sugars and help them grow in a process called photosynthesis. They essentially make their own energy to grow and survive. Consumers get their energy by eating other creatures. They, well, they consume them. Some of them eat other producers and get their energy that way, and some eat other consumers to obtain their energy. Decomposers, like bacteria and fungi, break down dead plants and animals and return their nutrients to the soil, getting energy in the process. They might not be glamorous, but they are a hugely important part of any ecosystem. Detritus is all the stuff being broken down by the decomposers. 
dead animals, leaves on a forest floor. It's all known by that name, detritus. A food chain is a basic line that shows you a bit of what eats what in an ecosystem. For example, in a pond, small plants and algae, which get their energy from the sun, are eaten by mayflies. The mayflies are eaten by dragonflies, and the dragonflies are eaten by a carp, which is a type of fish, and the carp is eaten by a heron. Finally, a food web is like a food chain because it shows you what eats what, except it shows a whole variety of biotic components in one diagram instead of just one chain. Basically, the food web is like a big picture of lots of different food chains, all shown at once. The food chain we spoke about just a second ago could be shown on this food web. So that about sums it up for this video. Thank you as always for watching and please consider liking and subscribing. And if you don't know what I'm going to say next, where have you been? If you wish to be notified when we upload a new video, please hit the little bell dingy. As always, you've been listening to The Mountain Man and watching the work of Michael Deluxe. And remember, keep it simple.